Dr. Lindsay and Wendy here. This is a basic video. How does a hair transplant work? It's not meant to replace doing your own research. We're learning how hair how hairs go away with related, in relation to alopecia from male pattern baldness or scarring alopecia. It doesn't replace a doctor visit. This just tells you how does a hair transplant work. And so, and we'll show you with one case. We'll take you through one, two procedure example. So, here, here's a guy that that has class six hair loss. There's seven stages of hair loss from one, which is probably less than, you know, hair like you have when you're 14, to class seven, which is the typical fryer tuck. There's just a little bit of hair on the edge. And so this guy's at class six. He's bald, as you can see, from the front to the back, but there's a good bit of hair that didn't fall out. And that, why did that hair not fall out, when you Because it does not have receptors for DHT. Uh, and so it won't go away with the typical male pattern baldness. And so you can take those hairs and put them anywhere you want to, and they still don't have DHT receptors, and so they won't go away, supposedly, and, and in practicality, as time passes. They'll get thinner as you get old, because everything gets thinner when you get old, but they typically won't go away. And so you can take, using uh, flowers analogy, let's imagine that you have red tulips on top of your head and yellow tulips back here, but all the red tulips die, you can move these yellow tulips up to the front of the head and they'll still live. Because yes. whatever killed the red tulips won't kill them. And so, we take hair from the back of the head, and there's a couple ways to do it, but this is a strip case. The first step is to design the hairline. And so, on this fellow, I drew an age-appropriate hairline that will look okay when he's 57 like he currently is, or 67 or 77. And we do the same thing with some subtle variations for a 27 or 37 year old because you're eventually going to be old guy like me. And so the plan is drawn out and then you'll note in this drawing there are some irregularities put in so that it doesn't look like a hair transplant. It just looks like a natural hairline. And so once we agree on that then the patient is given a Valium pill which is like drinking two or three beers uh, and then the procedure starts. And so we numb up the back with just numbing medicine and we cut this strip out and if you look carefully at this strip, hair grows like crick myrtle trees, which are all over Virginia. And they come in one stalk trees, which cover a little bit, and two stalk trees, which cover a little bit more. And then right when you walk into our current office, there's a four stalk crick myrtle. It gives you a lot of shading. So it's really nice to sit out there and answer the phone in the summer. And, and it covers better. But if you put that, put those big four stalk hairs at the edge, it looks like the 1990s plugs. And so we cut this out and we have six people sitting at microscopes that will dissect each group of hairs, whether it's one hair or two hairs or three hairs, four hairs, out and they put them in different cups and then they get those hairs get put back into the head uh, and so we make these holes and again this shouldn't hurt at all, the patient's awake and we're listening to classic rock and talking about whatever they want to talk about and the holes are made and then there's generally a bathroom break and a second Valium and then we put the hair in and so the hairs are put in and if you look carefully it's just like planting a tree when you stick a tree in the ground you leave it up just a little bit so that rainwater doesn't rot the, the trunk and because you know it's going to sink down you want a bunch you don't want a bunch of divots in your yard or on your head and so the first day there's all these things sticking up and then we have you come every day and we clean you this example is before we made everybody clean but this is okay cleaning at day six and it's kind of crusty if you if you were getting done now it should really look pristine at day six and then the hair grows for about a month and it falls out. And when you're kind of, when you're brown like me, it doesn't get color. But when you're fair skinned or reddish complexion, it gets real red in the recipient area uh, for about three months. And uh, and there's and the hair all falls out, so it's it's noticeable. The, the cuts and the scars that people always worry about in the front shouldn't be noticeable, but it does look like your sunburn. So it's a, an argument to do it in the summer when you can blame it on the sun. And here's a picture of the back of the head at one month. You can note the scars will healed up and my average strip scar is generally about as wide as that is, 1.1 millimeters. And then uh, the hair starts growing like four months out on most people, and it grows a bunch and then it stops, and generally around six months, the customer thinks that they've been swindled or it's not gonna grow anymore. And so I like people to come back in about six months so I can reassure them that it's nine times out of 10, it's really gonna grow up. Yeah. And so then here he is at six months. You can see him bending over and you can see where, where we stopped. And then here he is at a year and you can see the front looks good and he wants to do a second case. So 
at that point we cut out his old strip scar. So you get one scar on the back of your head, no matter how many cases you get, if you come here and we do, the whole, do all of them. And we get a few less hair grafts and we put those by and large behind the first case and somewhere along the hairline, depending on how the patient likes to comb their hair so that, that you can do more styling. And then here he is at two years out and that is an unremarkable looking hairline, uh, but it took two years to get there. And probably three days of significant discomfort. Oh yes, the first day on each case and a half a day on this, of each case. So probably three days of significant ouch and two years or two years and two months worth of waiting. So that's how hair transplants work. You get a lot of calls. Do you, do you, anything else you want to add to that? Well, that's why I ask you to do this videos because I get all the calls that usually people don't know that there is an actual surgery. There's a strip removed from the back of their head. They don't know that it falls, that it goes into a rest cycle, and they don't know how long it will take for it to yeah. grow. And so it is, you know, we always talk and show results, but I want you, I wanted you to do yeah. that, you know, so that way we know it's like, oh, we show you with pictures and I can just refer them to say, you can go and look at that video, there's pictures to it, yeah. because it's hard for them to imagine how the process is done. But um, this is, thank you yeah. for doing that video for us. There are, there are a total of four choices though. So as long as you're doing your research before you come in, choice one is do nothing. Nobody's ever died of going bald. You do not have to do a hair transplant. Choice two is you could wear a hair piece. In general, I think most men hair pieces don't look so good, but uh, maybe I'm only seeing the bad ones. Choice three is there are some medical treatments. Uh, Rogaine or minoxidil is available over the counter. I would guess that probably uh, 10 to 12 percent of our patients use minoxidil and Propecia or Finasteride is a pill that you take by mouth and uh, there are pros and cons to it but I would guess that somewhere around 8 percent of our patients take Propecia. So unlike everybody else we don't make anybody take anything and your fourth choice is right. Yeah I did get I get that yeah. call too often it's like do I have to keep on taking medicine after I do a hair transplant with you guys? So we don't make anybody take medicines because it's a big decision uh, for the patient. You know, there's pros and cons of, of, of all the medicines. And so uh, if you want to take medicines, that's independent of whether we do a hair transplant. So those are your choices is how a hair transplant works. If we can help you, please give us a call. Thank you.